morning, everyone. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 28th, and our temperature right now is at 48 degrees Fahrenheit, 8 degrees Celsius, and it's going to go to a high of 64 degrees Fahrenheit, 17 degrees Celsius. Um, I, it's amazing because the last couple days has been really rainy, but today it's beautifully sunny. Um, and by the weekend, it's supposed to be pretty hot, like around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's um, quite a change. So anyway, um, we'll see if it ends up doing that. Um, today is kind of a crunched, um, crunch day as far as video. Um, I'm going to talk about my progress, my whip progress, which ended up being more than I thought, more pieces than I thought. So that's going to take up some time. All the great amount of haul I got, because I've got quite a bit this week, which is going to take a while to get through. Um, my plans for next week, including mania, and um, an answer to a question that um, a commenter asked me. So that's going to be the um, whole my whole video this uh, this week. No other, um, nothing else but cross stitch this week. So on to my whips. We'll start with that. Get this started. My first whip I usually show, of course, is my um, temperature topography also known lovingly as temp typo. Uh, this is a uh, temperature piece where you do the um, stitching for each day and um, the colors end up forming your beautiful your beautiful piece by the end of the year depending on the colors of the day for the temperature. And so anyway this is um, a piece by Stitching Mommy and um, she's on Etsy. Uh, she has a lot of nice patterns and also she's a floss tuber and uh, one I adore. So anyway Go see her at um, Stitchy Mommy on Floss Tube. What I accomplished this week was my eye. So there it is. And here back farther, you can see um, how the temperatures have been doing. This is being stitched on 32 count B Stitch Me fabric in um, it's Lugana. It's the colorway peanut. And uh, the colors are some of what uh, Sarah had on her um, um, her color chart for like regular um, regular colors, not like extreme one way or not hotter colors, not colder colors. This is kind of the in between one, which gives me the best variety. I did sub a couple colors, but not not very many. Most of them are the same as what's on the chart. The um, eye has pretty much stayed, um, even with the rain we had, it pretty much stayed, which is pretty um, typical for this, sh this time of the year in Utah, which is various shades of in the 50s. So that's temperature topography. Okay, my next is the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler, the Talavera. Um, and this is a, just a picture of what, um, I bit just, you know, what this month's part is. So my words are getting all messed up this time. I don't know. I'm kind of tired. So we'll see how we do. Um, this week I worked on this one, this one, and starting on those. Um, didn't have a whole lot of time. I had some other commitment stitching for challenges that I really wanted to get done. So I didn't get as much done on this one this uh, week. But when I looked at my um, stitches that I did, I was kind of surprised. Last week I got a thousand stitches in, which is really very good for you know the time I spent. Um, this week I got 500, which was half the amount. And I didn't really think until I um, you know, totaled it up. I thought, oh, I'll probably have 200, 300 stitches. So in a way I did pretty well. So anyway, this, of course, is some um, Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler called Talavera. I'm stitching it on 32 count, um, a white Lugana, even weave, and um, with my called for colors um, to make the um, look of the Talavera, Talavera Spanish pottery that is so bright and beautiful. So, so I'm slowly moving along on, on those side sections. Okay, my next whip that I worked on this week was um, for the uh, Full Coverage Fanatics Bookshelf Challenge. Um, I didn't write down what it was. Oh, 
It was for a children's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So, of course, that was easy. I picked up Story Keep Maleficent. Some of you really like her, so you'll be able to see her this week. Um, and that was just perfect for The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, of course, because she's my little witch. So, anyway, I took her off the Q snaps because I, I had to move her down. So, since I did, I ironed her up a little bit and I'm showing, showing her to you off the Q snaps for once. So here she is. Um, this week I got about 350 stitches on her. Would have liked to have done a little bit more, but um, you know, I got done what I said I needed to get done, which is, I had mentioned last week that I wanted, this part right here was not filled in of the diagonal from that dark blue down as well as that. So what I did is I finished up filling, there was a little bit left here of this dark blue, which I did, and then I filled in this V of the um, black, and then down here I, I was just going to do that part, but then I ended up just filling in the rest because uh, then I could finish up a color, because that's the end of the color. Now I don't have any more of that particular color. So that was kind of fun, Xing the color off the, off the um, um, pattern keeper. So it didn't get quite up to starting up at the next diagonal, but that was all right. So I'm happy with, with what I got accomplished. So here she is in her glory. Um, oh, sorry. She's being stitched on 25 count even weave. We're gonna even weave with, um, uh, it's a gridded fabric in this case for this full coverage. And um, she is um, being stitched in the call for DMC. And uh, the stitching for this one, I do one over one full cross. So there's my Maleficent. Okay, the next piece I worked on, actually, I didn't say I was going to be working on it this week, but I realized um, it's a zombie run. It's one of my four zombie run pieces. Um, and for these challenges, if you would like to refer back to my previous videos, I explain more about them um, and uh, what they entail. Anyway, this one was um, my Garden Prelude, which is also one of my four zombie run pieces. And I realized I'm getting close to the end of the month and um, do, trying to do my plans for Mania and other things. And I needed to get in my miles for zombie run <coughs> and I was kind of behind. So um, I didn't just pick up my other piece that you'll be seeing pretty soon that I mentioned last week. I also picked up Garden Prelude. Garden Prelude is a Mirabilia piece and um, it's just, so pretty. I'm doing this for my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, and giving it to her. She's a very, very good violin violinist, and um, I changed out some of the color for the hair and for um, her skin tone to reflect her. So here she is. This is being stitched on 32 count, picture this plus demo cell. Um, not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, probably pretty close to, the, to it. It's a very subtle um, modeling of different blues, um, pinks, purples, whatever. So it's kind of really perfect for this piece. It just is a little subtle shading behind it of some of the colors that it picks up. So. And it's, of course, the called for DMC. And there's the color, um, color change I did of her hair and her skin tone, which is more um, what Mari is. So she's got kind of reddish brown hair and, and lighter skin tone. And what I ended up doing for my accomplishment, it's always, let me see, is down there at the bottom, I stitched in a whole lot more of the white and the green. I got 407, let's see. Yeah, 407 stitches to do one of my goals for Zombie Run. So that's Garden Prelude by Mirabilia. Okay, the other um, Zombie Run piece that I had mentioned last week for my plans that I was doing is my um, new substitute in. Um, I finished my other zombie run piece, so this was my substitute in. And this is Harriet Elizabeth Coe, a little sampler by Brenda Gervais. Real pretty, cute little sampler. 
that actually is not one of my mania starts. Uh, the previous few um, substitutions that I did into uh, Zombie Run were mania starts. This one is not. Uh, this one is one that I felt like I wanted to um, get it finished, and so I sub it, subbed it in. This is being stitched on Picture This Plus Fog and um, with a call for colors. I don't think I did any changing on this. And what I accomplished this week was pretty much, let's see, pretty much right here, this border, that one, and the F and the G. And I got um, 404 stitches to fulfill my zombie run. You can tell by this there's specialty stitches in this. I did the wrong specialty stitches when I first started, so I just continued. I was supposed to do Algerian eyelets, and I ended up doing Smyrna crosses, so I just went, oh, well, big deal. I just kept the same ones going. So if it looks a little different, it's because I didn't look at the, <laughs> the instructions to make sure I was doing the right specialty stitches, but that's all right. Actually, when I went down here to, I was supposed to be doing Algerian eyelets down on this little red part too, the red border going across. So I went, okay, maybe I should do them this time. So I switched over to Algerian eyelets for that. But since I had already started all that, I certainly wasn't going to go back and rip it out. So I just continued in Smyrna crosses. So anyway, that's what I accomplished on Harriet Elizabeth Co. Okay, my next is um, Full Coverage Fanatics, my 21,000 stitches in 2021 that I want to accomplish for the challenge. And this is, of course, Artisee's The Lace Maker. Um, and I did 650 stitches this week, which last week I only did about 470, so I did much better. This one, of course, as you know, is hard to see because it's most, mostly all white at the beginning of this uh, left-hand corner. I'm doing it in 25 count, um, uh, even weave Lugana, and with a called for DMC threads. Right back there, see if you can see any better. No, actually, it's a little better closer up. What I did this week is um, I had done a few um, few little blocks of uh, light blue so I filled it all in with the white that needed to be filled in with all of these and then I also filled in more of the trees. My little mini goal was to try to fill in all those trees down to there but I didn't quite get done but I did get some of it done. And that was 650 stitches so I'm happy with that progress. I Every week I, I need to do at least 470 stitches and um, I hadn't been very good at doing that. So this is adds more so I can pick up my, get closer to my 21,000 stitches by the end of the year. So that is the lace maker. And it, this is also one over one full cross. One more piece that I worked on this week that I mentioned was um, those Who Sing by The Drawn Thread. This is my birthday start from um, last October. My birthday's in October. So um, my goal, of course, is to finish it. Um, I just make an easy goal and I just finish it on my coming birthday this coming, uh, that's coming up in October. That way I have time to just work on it at leisure. And um, I do this once a month at least most of the time that once a month is about all I do, but once a month, Sarah, Sarah, who's Stitchy Mommy on, on Floss Tube, joins me and um, on video chat, and we um, stitch on this piece together because she got this um, piece for her birthday, so she thought that was appropriate that she work on it too. Um, it's out of the cue snaps this time than before when I showed it to you because I had to move it down some. This is being stitched on a, let me see, 32 count, I think. Yeah, 32 count Zweigart Vintage Stormy Night, which is the um, their fabric that they um, print on the front like a, a mottled color, and then on the back is just a plain, just the plain blue. So they make the print on the front. They have some nice um, printed fabrics that are, um, you know, very reasonable price. 
So if you want to look look up some of them, they have like vintage Country Mocha, vintage Stormy Night, you know, a lot of nice colors and, and um, you know, good prices on them. Anyway, what I accomplished this time on this was finishing this the trunk of the tree down to here, these leaves, and start in these leaves where there's going to be a bird coming up there just like over here. My birds don't have beaks. Um, since I stitch in, the, in my Q-snap, I don't like to... There are specialty stitches um, like satin stitches and other, other stitches, and I don't like to... Um, do those stitches until the very end since I work in a Q-snap because I'm just worried about them getting stretched, squished, messed up. So that's what I did. So my birds will not have beaks until I'm ready to do the whole thing. And then what I usually do with that is a lot of times I'll just do it in hand. I'll stitch in hand so I don't mess up those stitches. Um, and actually after I was done um, video chatting with Sarah, I actually continued working on this. So I got about 241 stitches in it. So those are all of my um, whips for this week. Actually, with a couple birthdays that I did for grandkids and um, going some places and everything, I'm surprised that uh, I got as much done as I did. Okay, before I move on to my haul, um, I had a question, or a comment, commenter asked me a question. Um, this is for you, Kim, and um, I'll just try to explain to you a little bit. Um, most of the time, she asked me a question about, let me grab this one too. She asked me a question about um, how I grid, and well, first of all, a lot of times if I'm able to, if I'm somewhere, I just buy gridded fabric. So of course that just makes it easy. I just get the 10 by 10 blocks of gridded fabric. And um, so I don't have to worry about gridding myself. And I just do it because this just washes out afterwards. So that answers the one part of the question. I'm usually using gridded fabric. But every now and again I can't get it or I want to start a piece really fast. And I do have, I do have a substantial amount of just 25 count um, of different shades of color. So... Um, with or in some cases I'm not happy with the grid behind it even though I know that it'll, it'll end up washing out I can't stand looking at it in a piece with a lot of lighter stitches which of course is lace maker so um because I started out on gridded fabric and it was just bugging the heck out of me I I mean I understood that it was going to get washed out but to just keep seeing these blocks of lines behind my white just did not set well with me even though I knew that it would be fine because I didn't know how long this piece is going to take me to do lifetime maybe or whatever hopefully it'll be a little less than that but I just didn't want to see those blocks back there so by pulling out of course the white even weave you know you're not going to get the um, gridded look behind that but you have to at least with me not everybody has to do this but I do have to do some form of gridding I I cannot even with the ease of pattern maker, I cannot work on a, a piece without doing some gridding. So I'm going to let you know what I do as far as my gridding and what I use. Okay. First, I'm going to preface this and tell you that um, I am not like some professional person as far as full coverage. There are other people, if you go on and look at their YouTubes that are just specifically about stitching on full coverage and how they grid and what works good for them, I would suggest you go do that. Um, type a search in and um, type in like full coverage, gridded, how to, whatever, because a lot of people will not do this or will say, this isn't good to do, you shouldn't do this, but it works for me. So anyway, but go check everybody else out. There's lots of different ways of gridding and you're going to find the way that you feel the most comfortable with. So when I have white pieces and I found this is actually my first white piece with, I mean, with a lot of white in the full coverage. And again, I was telling you, I didn't, was not happy with what I was doing as far as um, trying to, you know, my best way with the white not bothering me showing through with grids. So um, another thing I tried was um, doing a, um, like a, oh 
golly, what was it I used? I used another um, another marker that um, was supposed to come out after a long amount of time. But again, I, I was seeing the marks through it and I didn't like that. So what I finally ended up doing is I got, I have these two examples of these pens. Um, both of them you can usually get at um, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, any of the um, uh, fabric stores usually. This first one I picked up was a, a air and water soluble pen. You've probably seen these. Make sure it says air and water soluble. And I used this at first, but even though it looks like it has a real fine point, it would kind of like um, when I marked my 100, 100 block grid, it was bleeding out a little bit. And it was no problem with the pen. It totally disappeared in like two days. The marks totally disappeared. So that way it works good. But when I was actually making my marks, I, it wasn't showing a clear enough, um, clear enough to me to be able to tell where my 100 blocks ended there. So, um, but I was still using it and it was working good. And like I said, after 48 hours, it totally disappeared. I have nothing left on this, as you can see, because every time when I show it, you cannot see any um, marks at all. So this one works good. It's at every single sewing store I've ever seen. So, but just make sure it's air and water soluble with the purple tip. Now, when I was at a specialty quilt store, I ran across this one. Um, this is an air erasable pen. Somebody told me that you could get it at Hobby Lobby when I showed it to them. I don't remember. It might have been one of my stitching friends. So, or so it was probably one of my quilting friends, actually. Um, so you might check at Hobby Lobby, but, um, or at a specialty quilt store. Now, even though this doesn't really look like it's finer than the other, or even as fine, this one doesn't seem to bleed as much into the other fabric threads. So when I make my mark at, it ever, at every 100 by 100 block, um, it stays pretty, um, like, not bleeding. It stays very together and very sharp. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So I like this one better than this, but again, they both work and I've had no problem with them. Um, that's me, but I had no problem with them ever staying in the fabric permanently. This one, actually, I have to worry sometimes about getting my um, stitching done for the day. This one disappears so fast that in some respects might be a little too fast for you disappearing. So, because I could work on this one and after about three hours, it's almost gone. So this one at least lasts a couple days if I want to pick it up again and not have to regrid it. Um, but I will tell you, make sure that you use like, um, since the, even though this works for me, I don't want, I'm a, it's a disclaimer. I'm going to use a disclaimer here. Make sure that you put this on the edge of your fabric on the back and put your, just, just block out just to do a little, little X and leave it for a couple days before you ever start using it and see how, how long it takes to, to um, you know, bleed out or to, to disappear or whatever. So you know if you want to use it. Don't do it on the front of your piece with where you're working on right then in case it doesn't work for your fabric. So, and as you can see, actually, you, well, you can't see any of the other spots where I, where I put these pins on because of course they worked like they were supposed to. But I made the mistake, but it was, thank goodness it wasn't a permanent mistake because I did it on the back of my fabric. But as you can see from this, um, from folding over my fabric, this is actually the back of my fabric, but it's folding over on the Q-snaps. Um, I made the mistake, I, I picked up just a water soluble pin. And this again is similar to some other pins. It will wash out when I wash it, just as, as just the same as the gridded fabric that I buy but it wouldn't have made me happy having this on my white because I just want it to look white with no marks. So this, of course, did not come out, but it's fine because if you flip it all and if you pull this all out, it's on the back of my fabric up on the right-hand corner, so it's not gonna cause any problems at all, or left-hand corner, actually. So that's why I always put it in the corner on the back side of your fabric to check it out on the fabric you're gonna stitch. And that's been working out good for me. Um, 
maybe it disappears a little too fast in some cases especially if I'm working on a piece and working on it every day sometimes I grumble because I have to re-put the, the um, mark on it but for the, these light um, light threads and these light pieces it makes me happier um, I tried the other thing that people use or do is they'll use like, like threads either um, fishing line thread and they'll grid it that way or um, other kinds of threads that are different colors um, my brain that it just bugs me for some reason stitching through those things and around those things it, it just bugs the heck out of me and that's just me personally other people doesn't bother at all and it's a very good way to grid um but it it just bugs my it just bugs my brain so um it's the same with other things um when i do my lace making i like bobbins that have round points other people like square bobbins at the end and they love them but square bobbins bug my brain <laughs> for some reason. I just like the the aesthetic of a, of a rounded end bobbin. So in that respect, there's nothing wrong. I mean, it's perfectly fine to grid with, with the threads and stuff. Um, a lot of people swear by them. So. Anyway, that's my answer to the question. I hope it answered it. If it didn't, um, please leave me comments. Um, like I said, I'm not a full coverage expert here. You can go on and search for some others. They may give you even other ideas, but um, that's what I do for mine. So, Okay, we're gonna go move on to haul. Okay, I have way too much haul, and that's, that's how it is when you get to go back into a um, uh, LNS that you just absolutely adore and love, as well as get a few things in the mail too. So I'm gonna start with my monthly club, um, monthly club, uh, um, things that I get in the mail. So what do you call it other than things? My monthly club things that I get in the mail. Big deal. This is my Bee Stitched Me fabric that I got. Um, it is called anem an Anemone. Like a sea anemone. <laughs> it's a real pretty modeled um, uh, lavender, I would call it. So Didn't take these out of the um, plastic excuse me but you're getting a floss tube from me and that's about the extent of it right now this one again i'm not taking out of the plastic but you'll be able to see most of it this i started up another club with dying with dying to stitch lns so if you want to check and see if they have any club spots available you go to dying to stitch um it's a lns back in virginia anyway they started up their first of their quaint country ladies um, kits of the year. I think they, I believe they do four a year, so one a quarter. This is a, um, a exclusive kit by um, Pineberry Lane called Knit, or wait, called Kind and True. So it says, um, be be you to others kind and true as you would have others be to you so comes with all of the floss and threads pretty excited about this i like these 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 kits so i think i'm going to be excited for the rest of the year so that was another one of my monthly monthly things that i get actually this one's quarterly okay um i received um, an order from Kitten Stitcher, and that's Teresa Vanette. And um, if you go on to Kitten Stitcher um, online, I believe it's just kittenstitcher.com, you can find her site. She does a very, very good job in customer service and getting things out and having a lot of, um, lot of up and coming new um, patterns and um, flosses and fabric. So, um, I'll explain later why I picked this up, other than people are all, all going to say you have to buy every Blackbird, but there's another reason why I also picked up this one. It's a reprint of a black Blackbird Designs um, patterns from summer called Souvenirs of Summer. So. so I picked this up to work on a, a sal that I'm going to show you in a bit. But of course, that couldn't travel by itself. I'm certainly not going to travel certainly not going to have it travel by itself so 
I um, picked up some more sheepish designs. That's it's a um, designer who doesn't design anymore, and um, Kitten Stitcher has like can can sell her patterns still, and I love sheepish design. So this is one that I picked up that I didn't have already. I like her little samplers. Um, Oh my goodness gracious. It's hard to read this. Let me put on my glasses. May spotless, oh, may spotless innocence and truth my every action guide. I love that little lady shepherd and the geese and the house and those willow trees. Just love this. And it's called the Spotless Innocence. So, and um, the other one I got, a smaller sheepish design, is called Betsy, one of their 108th exemplary. I love this one too. It's a little shepherd with her sheep. There's a little peacock there. I don't think I'd stitch it on a yellow fabric. I don't know if that's just showing up because of the picture, but of uh, being yellow, but I definitely like this piece. So. So adding that to my sheepish design um, stash that I have. And here's a little pattern that, that Teresa just show you fast. It's a bunch of letters, it's a bunch of the alphabet and numbers, and it's, it's called Love You by La Dida. It's a freebie. So grateful to get that. So that's what I got from Teresa. Um, I just realized as I pulled this stuff out with Teresa, I didn't tell you. Um, Another couple other things that I got, which needed to go more for <coughs> previous previous orders. Um, Caroline off the grid was doing a, um, adding more Leo and Roxy threads to her supply, so I got this primitive packet of all of those colors there. Couldn't pass it up. They they were so so pretty when she showed them on her floss tube. And um, I have bought some previous Leo and Roxy, so um, I bought these. So those are my Leo and Roxy threads from Caroline Off the Grid. Um, you can also, I'll, I'll put her um, information below as well as Kitten Stitchers, so you know where to go to see them. Um, a while ago, this was has been probably sitting in customs for a while, um, Carrie on... Um, Daily 30, who does some of the admin work, um, has an Etsy store. And for our Daily 30 group, she decided to make up needle minders. And um, so she asked who wanted to get the needle minders and order them and stuff. So um, I said, me, me, me. So here they are. There's the Zombie Run Daily 30 2021 needle minder. And then just our, just a basic Daily 30 Facebook um, little needle minder. Her Etsy store is Black Pear. Um, if you want to go on and see um, see what she does, so so Carrie, thank you. I did finally get these. They sat in customs for a while, but that's all right. She also gave me a little freebie one too, and they came in this cute little little bag, along with I call them Smarties, but this is a different name. Um, sorry, Carrie, I know you live in, in, um, the United Kingdom, I'm pretty sure, but, um, if I'm wrong, sorry if you watch this floss tube, but she sent these, and they are not called Smarties like they are in, in the United States, they're called Fizzers, so, and I haven't eaten it yet, so, not on purpose purpose, I had some other goodies I was eating, so, <laughs> anyway, I'll give them a try. So thank you, Carrie. Um, I had totally forgotten I got ordered these and just came in a cute little bag. Okay, back to other regular haul, which will be my um, Shepherd's Bush haul. I mentioned last week for my plans that I was going over to Shepherd's Bush and pick up my, uh, um, my um, not Needlework Expo because they didn't do it this year, but the... Um, they didn't do it in person. They did like a virtual one for a lot of the designers. And so I saw some that I wanted. So I went ahead and I ordered them some through um, 
one another um, LNS and then some through Shepherd's Bush. So I'm going to show you what I got there um, when I went up to the door. Um, Terry and Tina and them. Um, I had called them and they and told them I was going to be there. And when I got there, they opened the door and they said, come on in. And I'm going, oh my goodness. And they said what they're planning on doing on May 1st is they're going to do um, like a grand opening. Again, for people to be able to come into the store and shop. But they thought, oh, well, we'll just do a soft opening. Come on in, Colette. And I'm like, ah. So I was able to go in and do a lot of shopping. So first, though, I will show you what I actually pre-ordered from them. There's still one that's outstanding, and I don't remember what it is now, but it'll be coming. These are their cute little plastic bags. Hard to see, but it has a little sheep running on it. It says Shepherd's Bush. So. Okay, this was one of my pre-orders. It's the Rose Cottage Sampler Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. I, I couldn't pass this up. I thought this was just so pretty and so cute. Also, I did like another one of Stacy Nash's, which is the Be Kind Sampler. I want to find some pretty gray fabric like this and do those beautiful white flowers. And um, this one says... Be kind to one another. That's why it's called Be Kind Sampler. Um, this is a world of care, and there is enough of needful woe for everyone to bear, which is so true. So I just loved the flowers on the side of the house, the little picket fence, the flowers around it. So that was the reason why I got that one. I also got this fox and rabbit designs. Elizabeth Cooper, 1866. I love that dog and those butterflies and that flower. And um, this one says, "'Tis religion that can give sweetest pleasure while we live. "'Tis religion must supply solid comfort when we die." So that's Elizabeth Cooper. And then um, the last one that they actually had gotten in was, um, this is another one that I wanted, Teresa Kogut's Fractor. I loved that. Um, um, pattern around the side and those birds and the, that um, heart and the angel. When I went into Shepherd's Bush, I knew immediately that I wanted to buy fabric. Um, and she had more fabric in. So I really didn't go for anything else other than just picking up my patterns, except for one thing that she had up out front, which I had been planning on ordering anyway. And when I saw it, I thought, well, I'm just gonna get it here. And that's Caroline Amelia Trowell by, um, with Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. When I saw other people show this, I just said, oh, I've gotta have that. So <laughs> the cute little people and the bird. Just love this. So that is one pattern that I did get at Shepherd's Bush just by being there in the store. Okay, now on to my real reason is to get fabric. And did I go hog wild with fabric? Okay, the first one I got, I, I stapled um, my own things on some of these. Some of them already had the colors, but I always staple my own little note thing on um, to make sure I know what the colors and the, and the count is now so that I don't have a drawer of mystery counts like I do on my very top drawer of my, um, of my fabric stash. <laughs> so I'm a little better that way. This is Lakeside Linen, and this is 32 count vintage light exemplar. If you open this one up and look at it in the right light, it is absolutely beautiful. It's not going to look good if I open it up now, I don't think. Though, I guess I could try it and see. It just, the, the like modeling and the look of it was just absolutely gorgeous. So, anyway, there it is. So I couldn't pass that up. I got a half yard of light exemplar. It's not always easy to get, so. 
to fold this back up. Okay, the next one I picked up was also Lakeside Linen. Um, it was a 40 count vintage exemplar. So I was able to pick up 40 count here. This is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is regular exemplar. I got a half yard of it, and you can tell, just like, look at that piece. Isn't that absolutely perfect? Love it. I'm so happy to pick up this, this lakeside. So. And you have to wait for me to fold it up again. I want them all folded. And then I got a 40 count half yard of vintage sand dune. Sand dune is another one that I really like a lot. So this is what I did my um, um, not wisdom sampler, but uh, my birthday my birthday piece from last year that I did that was out of print. Um, plantation sampler. I did it on vintage sand dune. So that's a color that I really like a lot. Works really nice for certain patterns. So, so there's that beauty. Um, they had just gotten in some fox and rabbit. And um, so I took a look at that and couldn't pass up this 40 count of um, Fox and Rabbit Ballet Slippers. Um, it has a lightish um, pinkish tone with um, brown undertones to it, so it's not totally pink. Um, I have a couple patterns that have this look to it, and I kind of wanted to do it on um, a, you know, fabric that looks similar to what they look like in the picture. So. So here it is. You can see it just has like, I mean, it's brown tones, but it's um, in the background, but it's like a light pinkish cast to it. So that is the fox and rabbit one. They had some other fox and rabbit in, but um, so I didn't take everything, of course. Um, but the other ones I already had, or it was ones that um, ones that I wanted, she didn't have at the time. So um, I picked up some R and R. They had some. Um, I got some forty count beach brew, which I had been wanting for a while. Um, I love the gray color of uh, R and R's beach brew. So. So I was happy to get get that. And then my last piece is also R and R. And um, I'm using this same color for um, the pandemic um, sampler. That's not the long dog, but the one that uh, uh, Eclectic Possessions Emily started with a group of us from a um, an Etsy. I mean from a um, uh, Instagram designer and um, this is 18th century blackbird in 36 count my other one was in 40 and I would have liked to have gotten 40 but this is not easy to find so I and I wanted to get some more of it so I ended up this doesn't show up the best um, but it's like a really dark dark gray and just looks really nice with some particular samplers so so that's 18th century blackbird. If I'd opened that up, the sun would just shine right through it. So as it is, it's just better to keep it closed. So those are all of my haul for fabric from Shepherd's Bush. I'm such a happy girl. Happy, happy. Um, oh, I asked her, I said, I had been using, somebody had given me a little Shepherd's Bush white bag. Um, that's about half the size of this one. But it has, still has a sheep and shepherd's bush on the front. And um, I told her the one I, I use half the size of this one, I use for my um, knitted socks that I do. Because um, it's a little small to put, you know, like a, 
uh, cross stitch projects in, especially when I want to use my Q snaps, bigger Q snaps. And I said, You wouldn't happen to have any of those little small bags left, would you? I would love to have one. And so she goes, Wait a minute, let me go check. And so she went to the back and she brought me out um, this big one here. So thank you, Terry. But then she didn't only do that, she shoved that into my bag. And um, she shoved this one in without me seeing. These cute little scissors. I didn't even see that. <laughs> and it says, thank you for helping us out through the pandemic. Thanks for your support. I think that's so sweet. I would always support them at Shepherd's Bush, but that's really nice of them. I know it was hard and um, yet people supported them and, and ordered things from them. And um, thanks everybody for keeping them going. I just really appreciate it and I appreciate them. So, okay, on to plans so we can get this done because it's already moving on time-wise. Um, I'm going to um, finish my zombie run, my last zombie run piece. I had mentioned that. I have to do Garden Prelude, or I mean either Garden Prelude or Harriet Elizabeth Coe. I'm going to do another 400 stitches to finish up my total miles on um, zombie run. And uh, so it'll be one or the other of those. Also, I'm going to do um, keep working on this. I didn't get a chance to um, put any stitches into the cat's reflection sampler that I'm doing. So I'm going to work on that the next three days until May 1st, which of course starts Stitch Mania for me and some other people too. Um, and Stitch Mania, I believe, will still continue even though the Facebook page and the, and the people who started it ha are going to stop um, officially sponsoring it, I believe that, uh, and stop their page. I, I believe that um, the event will still continue. I watched Jessie Marie uh, yesterday, her Stitch Mania, uh, what she wants to do for Stitch Mania. Just, Jessie Marie does stuff. Love her. She's so sweet. Anyway, um, she said the same thing. I, you know, it's going to continue. People just take it, run with it, and still do it. So anyway, back to this. Um, we've got three more days in the month of April, so I want to get some more work done on, on this reflection sampler because I love it so much. So, um, And another thing that I'm going to work on until um, May 1st is in the Souvenirs of Summer book, which I mentioned to you. Um, and it's this piece right here, America. And um, I'm participating in a birthday sal for Melanie Smith of Yarns and Threads. Hi, Melanie. Um, and this is my plan for, for how I'm going to stitch it. Melanie loves blackbirds, so she picked um, something out of the new, the new booklet. And of course, I didn't have it, so I had to rush in and get it from Kitten Stitcher, or from whoever had it. Um, here's one of my mystery mystery pieces of linen from that top drawer I was telling you about. It's a 36 count, but um, I am not really sure. It's it, I cut off some of it off the side there, so and off the other side. So, and from the feel of it, it feels almost either like a um, Zweigart or, or a lakeside. Um, I'm not sure if it's a lakeside that I bought a long time ago, or if it's um, just a Zweigart, but um, feels like that base. But I do know it's 36 count. And I think it's going to work good for the color I picked, which of course is a solid color for this um, for this cell. And I'm doing Classic Color Works Bing Cherry, which is pretty shades of deep red. So, so those are my plans. I'm going to start this today if I get a chance. If not, I'm going to start it tomorrow and I'm going to work on it for the next few days until Mania starts. When Mania starts, I'm going to have to put everything else aside, um, of course, but and then just concentrate on Mania. And uh, my Mania is, is a Whip Mania. It's just my 11 whips that are left that need work done on them that were from previous Manias from previous years. And um, when Mania starts, I will um, show each piece how much I got done on it on Instagram. Um, and uh, post a picture of my progress every day through 11 days. Um, if I get the chance, I mean, not if I get the chance, I will be doing a daily 30 every day too before I pick up the mania piece. 
Um, the first daily 30, of course, will be um, the May Flip It, since I'm doing every Flip It from Lizzie Kate for the year. Um, this has already been um, kitted and everything else, so I'm ready to start on it. So my first 30 minutes to an hour a day will be to work on um, the Flip It, the May Flip It, and then I'll move on to the Mania piece for that day. Um, so that's my plans for, uh, for the first week anyway. Um, let's see. There's anything else. No, I'm going to go on and do the daily gratitude, and then I'm going to wish you guys all a happy day. A good stitching day, hopefully. This is by Eckhart Tolle. It says, acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. We will always feel like we have a lot and more than enough if we acknowledge what we already have. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for coming back every week. And remember the beauty out there on the highway and at home. And I hope you guys all have a fun week. If you're doing Stitch Mania, enjoy that. And I'll talk to you in about a week. Bye-bye.